on 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. 737 now on O'Connor and Company. Thanks for tuning in here on this busy Wednesday morning in the nation's capital. Coming up at 8.05, Tom Bevan, Real Care Politics. Talk about the latest state of the polls for the presidential election and also about tonight's debate in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. <laughs> Why am I excited about Tuscaloosa? That's the home Why do you of, say it that way? Because, well, because that's, you know, uh, SEC football, Alabama, uh, oh, okay. roll tide. Got it. Got Although it. Michigan will be playing Alabama in the championship or the uh, semifinals. So hmm. to hell with Tuscaloosa. We don't, need, sure. we don't need those people in our lives. Crimson Tide. I'm Larry O'Connor. That's Julie Gunlock. Good morning. And let's get to it. Because we love Virginia Fox. She is. Are you allowed to uh, call a congresswoman a foxy lady? Are we, you are. Can we do that? Yeah. I want to get canceled. Because she's uh, foxy. She is. She's fantastic. And she joins us now. Uh, Chairwoman Fox, thanks for joining us as always. Oh, always glad to be with you and heard you guys early this morning as I was up and getting out of my apartment and uh, driving to work. Oh, good. It doesn't take me long to drive to work, so, <laughs> but I... Try to make sure I've got you on the radio. Aww. Well, we appreciate that, and you've got great taste, if I may say. And, and listen, you probably heard us uh, dumbfounded at the questioning of these three presidents of universities, Pennsylvania, Harvard, and MIT, by your colleague, Congresswoman Elise Stefanik. Here's a little bit of it. It is a context-dependent decision, Congresswoman. It's a con- Context-dependent decision, that's your testimony today, calling for the genocide of Jews is depending upon the context. That is not bullying or harassment. This is the easiest question to answer yes, Ms. McGill. Well, it used to be easy, Congresswoman Fox, but you you saw that. And you must have been just as dumbfounded as you can hear in the voice of Congresswoman Stefanik. I, absolutely. You know, I, I thought about this. I thought about slipping Elise a note and saying, well, what if they um, said all, you know, I'm half Italian, so I can say this, okay? What if they had said all WAPs and all Dagos should go? Yeah. Um, it, you know, yeah. I, it would have been different. You know, if they had said certain words, their attitude would have been very, very different. Now, we can't say those words even in an example, but if they had said those, There'd be no question about what they would have done. Right. Um, all, all they could do, I kept saying, you know, I met with them before the hearing, the day before the hearing, and they asked me, they said, what's your vision for, for what comes out of this? And I said, did you all get a spine? Yeah. <laughs> that's what I said to yeah. them. I mean, well. I should have said it in the meeting yesterday, but that's what I said to them directly. I think they were a little stunned by what I said, but that's what the whole hearing was about. Get a spine, do the right thing, show some morality. And I, I, I also said to them, and members, mem- many members said the same thing. I said to them when they said, well, we, we are adamantly opposed to anti-Semitism. I said, you know, talk is cheap. Yeah. yeah. And and I think most of our members tried to get that across to them. We need action from you. Don't just uh, give us platitudes. Um, <clears throat> there, I I think higher education, as I made a comment uh, both at the opening and, and ending of the hearing, is uh, the attitude toward it by the American people is at a new low. Yeah. I mean, the, their reputation is terrible. And there's a fantastic um, editorial um, in in the Wall Street Journal and then another one yesterday, which I didn't get a chance to see till after the meeting. Higher ed has become a threat to America. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I am going to put this in the record, too. It's by John Ellis in yesterday's Wall Street Journal. And and he lays it out very, very clearly. Lance Morrow laid it out well a couple of days ago. So we have people now paying attention. Guys, I've been talking about this for a long, long time, and nobody's, nobody has, has looked at it like we did yesterday. These are absolutely national security threats. I mean, obviously, the, the, <clears throat> the, 
my heart goes out to every Jewish student on the campus of one of these universities led by these women who cannot denounce what is happening on their college campuses. But there is no doubt that these are national security threats and they're indoctrination centers. Um, but uh, your hearing was so important because it does expose the rot and the moral corruption that is going on on these university campuses. But as a taxpayer, I'm also concerned, why are these universities getting our tax dollars? I mean, is this ever going to to end? Well, we we are looking at that and we we are looking for ways to take the money away or not give them the money mm. to begin with. And particularly the large institutions like Harvard, I think they have a $500 billion uh, <clears throat> endowment or something. I don't yeah. remember the exact amount they said yesterday, but it's huge. And we're looking for ways to make them pay the more of their own way and not depend on taxpayers who don't have a college education, don't have an opportunity to go to college. And we keep pointing that out. About 70% of the people in this country did not go to college or don't have a college degree. And we're paying for the 30% who do. And it's it's high-priced welfare is what Mm -hmm. it is. I've said that for years. For bureaucrats, for faculty, for staff, uh, there's no place in the world where people are more coddled than on university campuses. Wait, go ahead and take a sip of water there, Congresswoman Fox. I, I feel your pain. I have to deal with that all the time with my voice. Um, but you just said that you wanted these university presidents to actually do something, not just sit by the sidelines and act like they're um, you know, observers to this. I, you know, a lot of people listening to this, they want Congress to do something too. They, they, they want Congress to, to, to grow a pair, as it were. Um, why not just have a standalone bill right now, just all by itself, standalone, that says we're going to pull federal funding from any school that doesn't properly enforce their code of conduct, uh, like Harvard, like MIT, uh, if they're allowing anti-Semitism and calling for the genocide of Jews on their campus. It's a very simple bill. I could write it. It's one paragraph. And I know it will probably get voted down in the Senate, but make the Democrats say, oh, no, 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 we're fine with this. Force them to make that vote. I think it would be very instructive to their voters. Well, we're going to have some bills um, that they're going to have a chance to vote on and vote no and show their true colors. We're coming forth. We are. We already ha- are coming forth. To- today and tomorrow, we'll have the Deterrent Act, which will require more transparency uh, we'll cut off funds coming from malign actors like the um, mm. uh, CCP and other places where we're going to say you can't take that money and hide behind it and promote the causes. So we'll see how many Democrats vote on okay. that. But you're right, Larry. We we could put those bills on the floor, but they wouldn't pass in the Senate in particular. And we do have some Republicans who'd vote against it. But for the most part, Republicans are sounding the alarm, and we're moving closer to this. You know, you've heard it before. The founders created a perfect (laughs) government, but it moves slowly. And so we're working. Look, it's taken a long time to get people to understand what's happening on the campuses. Yeah, you know, you're right. And, And the more hearings, the better. But people do want action. Uh, no, I do appreciate it, and and we'll just keep beating the drum here too, as you know. Uh, and, and we need trustees too. Mm-hmm. We need trustees yes. to step up and talk about that because they hire the presidents, and the presidents are in charge of hiring the faculty. And so it's not just what we do here. We can pass a lot of laws. We can take their money away, but they have so darn much money it might not make a difference. So there has to be change within the institution as well as outside. Yeah. And and one other thing, by the way, and the the thing, frankly, because I don't see a problem in our country and think immediately, well, Congress needs to fix it. Ultimately, the free market can fix it. And I think that the display that you put on yesterday so that the American people can see exactly what goes on at these elite universities, I think that this is going to do more to drain money, real money, big-time money, away from these universities than anything you can pass in Congress, frankly. Uh, And I can't wait to see that happen. People have to vote with their feet. They have to go someplace. And I said this yesterday. 
let's not continue to call them elite universities. Let's call them the most expensive universities. <laughs> and, yeah, that's right. And let's, <laughs> let's stop bolstering them because they are not elite. They're not teaching higher order skills. That's People right. aren't thinking there. And we've got to change our language, too, and not right. keep bolstering You're, them. Well said. We will. I uh, th- appreciate you joining us, Congresswoman Fox. Chairwoman oh, Fox. thank you. We hope you have a great right. Christmas. Yeah. You too. Right. Bye bye. It's seven forty seven. I know I give her a hug. I love her. Yeah. And I love whoever handles her Twitter account too. It's yes, hilarious. Great. Oh, maybe she does it. Maybe. I don't think so. Here's Steve Hershorn and the